everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today for this amazing Working While Black Open Forum. My name is Michelle Hockett. I'm a content marketing media specialist at Spotify, and I'm also the founder of It's Epic. It's Epic is a creative and professional networking platform that is looking to connect creatives and professionals all worldwide. So if you're creative, a freelancer, a strategist, we aim to help connect you with businesses who are in need of your services. And if you are a brand, an entrepreneur, an artist, we look to connect you with creatives and professionals who can help you. If you're interested in joining, please follow us on Instagram at It's Epic Group. So the reason why I wanted to host this forum was because honestly, last week was hard and draining, and I'm sure it was for a lot of other of you guys. Working at all of these big companies, and having business as usual with coronavirus and being stuck at home and being not being wanting to take days off because of mental health and on um, all these other things on top of now social injustice towards our community it really made me angry and i just wanted to really just have this conversation for how we can do better how we can move forward in the workplace how we can uplift our community um and how we can just, you know, keep pushing forward, being Black first, and being a professional as well. But, so I got the best BNI leads who are willing to participate. Can you guys please mute everyone? Yeah, can everyone please go on mute for the time being? Thank you. So I got some of the best DNI leads who were willing to participate so last minute, and I'm really appreciative of all of them. So first we have Takesha, Takesha Thomas, sorry, an account manager at Microsoft and the lead of Blacks at Microsoft for New York. We have, Sharice, everyone say hi to Takesha. <laughs> Next we have Sharice Bernard, who works in academic relations, campus recruitment at Spotify, and the co-lead of BLK. Everyone say hi to Sharice. Next we have Denise Bennett, Director for Content Partnerships for TBS, TNT at Warner Media, and also the New York Chapter Lead for Black Professionals at Turner. I want to say hey to Denise. <laughs> Next, we have Andrea Russell, a Global Product Lead at Google and the New York Chapter Co-Lead for Black Googler Network. Everyone say hi to Andrea. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Elise Richards, a community organizer at Lyft and the National Programs Lead for Uplift for the Black um, the Black Professional Network at Lyft. Say hi to Elise. So I really just wanted to dig um, deep and please feel, feel, feel free to use the chat um, to really share your thoughts and opinions. And I really want this to be as communal as possible. So if you have any thoughts that you wanna share, um, please use the hand raise button on the side or ping in the chat and we can really just have the, this candid conversation for everyone to kind of really feel that sense of, you know, belonging and really just continue to uplift each other. So I do have a, a bunch of poll questions that I would like to start with to just really get the temperature of everyone and see what are people's organizations doing? Are your employers sending out messages? Are your employers sending out public statements? And if not, what can we be doing as the Black professionals at these companies to really help? So I'm going to launch the poll and give you guys a few seconds to begin. So while we get some few questions, I guess we can get started. So the first question is, has your employer addressed the social injustice company-wide? I don't know who wants to take that one and explain maybe what companies have been doing, what has been this communication, and do we really feel that it's been enough of the communication been put onto our company? I can start, Michelle. Mm -hmm. uh, so. so Monday, I believe, Spotify did um, actually address the situation with uh, George, George Floyd on Monday with a tweet. Um, 
our BOK network and even she has been formed for about four years and this is the first time that they have actually publicly addressed external and internal employees about any type of social justice issues. So we are moving in the right direction um, and we're hoping that we can use this as, um, you know, to build momentum in the right direction. That's for Spotify. Definitely. Yeah, and, I agree. Uh, for, for Warner Media, our, our new CEO, Jason Kylar, he sent out a, a really great message uh, to let everybody know that, you know, we as a collective have to stand with the, listen to the Black community. And uh, he gave some great articles for people to uh, do the work to start to uh, understand what has been going on uh, in our lives and in our community to better understand us. Uh, we did get another message from our chief diversity officer. And then of course us as black professionals sent a more personalized note to our members uh, to just show some solidarity and understanding for what we as a collective are going through in the context of also working at this company. Nice. Yeah, I'm happy to share as well. Um, because I feel like, at least at Google, there's been the official response, um, which sometimes can feel a little bit performative, and then there's like the grassroots efforts which, which we're doing. So officially, like last Friday, YouTube like posted on their Instagram, they donated money to the Center for Police Equity. Um, on Sunday, Sundar, uh, he shared a message on his Twitter. We did, you know, a message on the Google homepage, um, but internally, like specifically for the New York chapter and Black at YouTube, we've been trying to host listening sessions similar to this one where the community can really just share like what's coming up for them. Because I think, you know, a lot of us have been getting a lot of questions from colleagues who've had to show up for work. Um, and just, ha just having a show of support from your company sometimes isn't enough. So we're trying to show up um, for each other. Definitely. Yeah, same at Lyft, um, our CEO, made a statement um, publicly on the company website through driver and passenger. Um, you all, if you all drive with Lyft, probably received that message through the app. <laughs> um, they also spoke out on Twitter, on their personal Twitter pages and on the company pages. Um, of course, an email went out to the entire company. It did come after the first email went out to just the Blacks at Lyft group, um, which historically has always been a thing. We try to push our uh, leaders on acknowledging that some messages aren't just for Black people and should be for everyone. So we were happy to see the swift uh, turnaround on getting an all-company email to go out. Um, and then, yeah, we're also hosting internal listening sessions and just open floor sessions for the company. Our uh, Uplift Forward group is hosting one for just forward members. And then we're also hosting a separate one not all company, but for all allies who want like the more detailed conversation and information and ways they can help. Mm -hmm. and I guess I'll be last but not least. Um, on the Microsoft front, uh, last week, Thursday, uh, we actually hosted a town hall for every employee at Microsoft where our CEO um, actually delivered a heartfelt message about what is going on and urged everyone that now is not the time to be silent or still. Um, we then heard from other people within our company on what the company is actually doing to be active as opposed to just speaking. Um, and so they went through a number of ways in different places we're donating. From a Blacks at Microsoft standpoint, um, we did release also a heartfelt message to our uh, network to just kind of let them know that we're here for them. And we also uh, just did. Kind of like we were thinking activists inside of my company or innovator inside of my company mm -hmm. uh, early on. Can everyone please remember to stay on mute while we are speaking? Thank you. Um, and then from a, a Blacks at Microsoft standpoint, um, we also just hosted an event uh, last week, and it was called Mental Check, the Black Experience, where we brought in a licensed clinician to actually talk to us about what it was that we're experiencing, um, dealing with both COVID and racism at the exact same time, and what that is on our actual mental, because 
Um, one, we know that mental health is really stigmatized in our communities. And then two, um, you know, it's also disproportionate the way that things affect us. Um, and with COVID, you know, we got hit the worst out of everyone. Um, and just acknowledging that in and of itself is racist. Um, and so we really just brought someone in to kind of deep dive with us to talk about how to preserve our peace and our mental wellness, but also what not to do. Um, if you don't want to do anything, don't feel forced to come up with some new skill and start knitting or whatever it is, just kind of being cool, um, acknowledging your feelings um, and kind of deep diving through there. We're just trying our hardest to create safe spaces and also to hold our leaders accountable, uh, both internally and externally. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is that, you know, a lot of companies can also release messages, but if they don't necessarily stand behind those messages and their actions, um, then I'm not really sure that that matters. So um, a company I always think gets it right is Nike, right? You see the just do it ads and now they're doing the don't do it campaign, which is kind of cool. Um, but then you think about companies like the NFL who are releasing statements um, about police brutality and it's the same thing they just blackballed Colin Kaepernick for. So just be very mindful that um, your company needs to stand by what it is that they're releasing. Um, just because it's not okay to, you know, bandwagon or support something because it's trending. Definitely. And I guess to kind of piggyback off of this, do we think that the actions that were done onto George Floyd kind of stemmed all of our companies to kind of push forward or were our companies saying things about Ahmad and Brianna and all the other rightfully, like, I mean, unrightfully wrong killings? I think that uh, the killing of George Floyd was a critical turning point because the video actually showed him dying. Um, I think that that is really difficult to watch and not have a response, not feel any type of emotion. So the fact that it was on video, the fact of the angle, um, the nonchalant look of the officer, I think that really touched everyone and it really just felt, feels like a last straw. Um, you know, it, it's really interesting to me that other killings and, and attacks have been on camera, but this one in particular, I think, is a real turning point. Um, for the other attacks that we've experienced in the last month or so, our leaders have addressed it internally, but this was the first time, even, you know, since I've been at Spotify, that they have made a public statement. So I think that this particular uh, incident has really been a turning point in our communities, um, you can see from what's going on in cities all across America and even other cities in the world that people are really, I think, just tired and exhausted about having to explain what's been going on for 400 years. Mm -hmm. And for, for Black professionals at Turner, we, we were talking about this um, and how we were going to address this amongst our members. We had already been talking, we were already in the planning um, doing exactly what Takesha was, has been doing over at Microsoft. We were in the process of planning our, our uh, generational trauma discussion. Uh, we were doing it for Juneteenth. Um, so we're going to have a conversation with CNN's Van Jones and a, um, a psychologist who specializes in generational trauma and talking about what's, what's been happening to us mentally starting with the anchoring the conversation in Juneteenth, but we had also actually, as we were uh, concepting the event, talking about the many, many, many of us who have now become these hashtags. I think at the time that we started it, when we started concepting, I think we had just gotten to Ahmad and Brianna. And now we've had now, mo now we're just adding on more hashtags to it. Yeah. Right, so we were already going to have this discussion anyway that we needed it. Mm -hmm. Definitely agree. Yeah. Oh, do you wanna add on? No, you can go. <laughs> I was just gonna say definitely agreed. I feel like this was kind of almost the tipping point for a lot of different companies to really realize that we do need to take action and we do need to stand in solidarity with our Black community. So with that being said, do we feel that what our companies have been doing is enough? Do we think that maybe there's something more that we can do as these leaders in the Black professionals of these companies that we can do to kind of really make people listen and make people at work 
feel the, that uncomfortability that we feel when we see these things happen as well. Yeah, I think just to sort of like add on from that other question and take it forward to like, are we doing enough? Um, we did hear from other leaders at Google about some of the other killings, Ahmad, Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, but I think, you know, the political opportunity, people being home from work, people being sick and tired, having a video that actually showed someone dying on camera, like it all made this perfect storm for like the protests to happen. And I think it's also created an opportunity for us internally as tech workers or maybe people working in different industries to help um, advocate for, you know, for the things that we need, for our rights at our companies, for like, for justice. And so what we've been trying to do is take advantage of this time where our execs and our leaders are listening and tell them, you know, and come up with a list of demands. So we've actually been trying to, and I have to salute like all the folks at Google and our people operations and HR who've been doing this work for the past, you know, X number of years who are ready now to help us mobilize and have meetings with some of our executives and say, hey, we, you know, like these are the things that we need to help make our working environment better um, and to help make sure that our products are equitable for everyone who uses Google. Um, and, and that's what we're trying to do, like use this moment in time to help uh, take advantage of people who are now listening, who maybe weren't listening before. I, I think that's exactly right of using this moment in time. Um, our company has, our company is doing some things and they, they are open to having some conversations. Uh, but a lot of us, again, with our, with our, with Black professionals at Turner, we've been doing this work and we've been focused on the advocacy and the support for our employees and writing very detailed strategies on how we can, you know, well, better help the company so in their, in their DNI initiative. So, you know, as Andrea said, now, if, if now is a moment that we can see that, you know, people are listening a little bit more intently, okay, let's now, uh, re-engage some of those conversations, but I, I think it might have been to Keisha that said of being also very mindful of, of how much energy we are going to expend. Um, it's important for us to know that, you know, the, the overall issue of racism is not something that we, we didn't start that and we can't fix that. So we can't take on the weight of fixing that in our companies. We can partner and do our part as corporate citizens, but we can't take the weight of fixing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. What you were saying, like that's literally a meeting that I got out of today. Um, really talking to people about what active allyship looks like um, and really pushing allies to jump in and actually capitalize on this moment with us. Um, also just uh, want to point out that like while we are capitalizing on this moment in time, which is great because people are listening to our community, people are taking to the streets with us um, and the number of protests that I've done, um, it's mostly diverse crowds, which is great. Um, one thing I've also been pushing people to talk about is how not to make this just one trending topic. What are the long-term residual things that we're trying to see happen at our different companies and how are we going to hold them accountable to doing those different things. Um, so while I'm super excited that everyone is paying attention, we're not saying anything new. Um, nothing we're saying is very different. Uh, maybe the lens that captured it this time felt a little different to people um, and also acknowledging that we are inside experiencing COVID. So maybe a lot of people are also um, looking for something to gain interest in. Um, and that doesn't take away from whether or not they're a part of the movement they're here. Um, but once COVID is done, once this specific instance is done, how do we prevent another hashtag from coming? Um, and I love what Denise said, like a lot of people keep looking to ERG leads to uh, lead them into this. And to be honest, I don't have all the answers myself. Um, and I've been finding that I am mentally and physically exhausted because I'm getting hit up this morning. I went on a call at 9.30 a.m. and I talked about this all the way until 3.30 p.m. Um, and even on the last call, 
I went in with like this long list of agenda items that I needed to get done. Um, and as I started expressing myself, it came out in the form of water through my eyes. And I was just like, what is this? Like, you know, it's the first time I've ever been in a meeting with people that I really wasn't that comfortable with that I actually started to cry. Um, and it wasn't because I'm just sad, but I was frustrated for not having answers. I was mentally exhausted from people asking me all day, every day, what it is that they should do. Um, we're protesting at night and then being superheroes at work. Um, so really just, you know, focus on, on our abilities and what we can do. But um, outside of capitalizing on this moment, like we need to also make sure that this is something that helps to create systematic changes and that people are not just excited because we're inside, but like how do we make sure that we actually push this movement forward, get legislation in place that's going to prevent this from happening again? Because I don't know. About <laughs> I'm sick of feeling this way. I'm sick of being exhausted. So. Definitely plus one to all of that. Like, I cannot tell you how many times meetings start with how's everyone feeling or how's everyone doing? Like, yesterday, how was the weekend? Like, it's really tough to answer those questions, especially when everyone has the same news. We all are seeing what is happening on social media. We all see what's happening on CNN, MSNBC, all of these sites. So I, I don't understand why the field to ask, how are we feeling or are we okay? Because no, we not are not okay. And two, you shouldn't be okay either. Right. Just because it's an issue with black people doesn't mean that it's not a human justice problem. So but don't no, keep on asking us if we're okay. Michelle, no. I, think, I think we, I, I know I've been having to sometimes explain to people that we are having a different experience than others are. We are, and we're not upset about the same thing. You know, some of them are upset about this particular moment in time of what they've seen and the, the horrific nature of what they've seen. We're having a different situation right now. We are having almost a cathartic release of emotion of just generations of just pain and anguish and we are now just outwardly expressing it and like Takesha said part of it is just because we're home and you know on top of all this that we're like I mean it's just every day and I've you know been explaining to people that I, I know for you you might have just discovered that racism just began today mm -hmm. this is every day for us and we just you just are hitting us at a, a, a moment in time where it is overwhelming to us so if it is shocking and horrible to you, welcome. Uh, <laughs> we're glad you're here. Uh, not going to help you through that. Um, you're going to have to sit in that and figure that out for yourself. And then you figure out how, what you can do. You, we, I think a lot of us have been telling people that you've been sitting on a whole bunch of privilege and access and power. And... A lot of us have been telling you all for a long time, and now is a moment where you can start, we can start working together and you can start, you know, using some of that power for us to make change. But again, we can't spend that, we can't spend any more energy. I, I'm sure a lot of our members, you know, we've been having conversations with all of our members on how to just preserve their peace. And if they're getting a lot of these thoughts and prayers, from people, we are trying to tell them, listen, when you get them, you can say thank you. There's there's no harm in being gracious. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can't you can't take on other people's guilt. You you can't. And you shouldn't have to. And it's about preserving that peace. And that's what we are saying to our to all of our members, especially these these few days where it's so it's so hot right now where you know, a lot of people are calling in black this week because it's just too much. But just telling our members to protect your energy, protect your, protect your space, and always remember, we did not create this problem. We cannot fix it. And just stick in that. And also, just to piggyback off what Denise is saying, this is the day of the internet. Um, don't feel like you need to explain everything to everyone. Um, they can literally go on the internet and search for something to 
things themselves. Like the very basics of like black history is all online. Um, so I feel like for a lot of people who keep asking me questions, those are the things I'm directing them to straight to the internet and saying, hey, if you look this up, you might actually find out X, Y, and Z before you actually have to come and speak with me about it. So by the time you get to me, we can have a little bit more of a robust conversation as opposed to me teaching you the steps of allyship that you should have learned already by yourself. Mm -hmm. I also just want to add on because I feel like this is like, this is it. Self-preservation is an act of political warfare. If we don't keep ourselves right, we won't be able to carry on. And I think we know that this is just the beginning, like just because a lot more people are listening right now. That doesn't mean that the whole country is all of a sudden not going to become racist. So it's really important. I just want to emphasize like the self-care, like set the boundary, but also like do practices that can help um, like lift your spirits and revitalize yourself. For me, that means like not going on social media, seeing images from the protests in my feed, you know, it, it breaks my heart. It breaks me down you know, it's sad. So just be sure to set your boundaries, not only like restricting social media, but doing other things, like whether that's meditation or yoga, there's tons of resources online. Um, speaking with a therapist, like these are all resources that we've been sharing um, with our community. And I would encourage everyone to like, you know, reach out to someone if you feel like you need to talk or if you need some support. Definitely. So how do we respond to these coworkers? How do we, you know, explain that we are feeling this pain? You know, we, we don't want to talk, maybe. We just kind of want to get the work done and go through the day. How, like, what would you guys suggest? I know um, for me, I am notoriously known on our team of 98 um, to be the one everyone can count on to keep it real. So for me, I just give I give the authentic direct me and if if it's not if I'm not in the mood to like do work or talk to people I legit I have to tell them that straight up explicitly because I don't want them to misinterpret anything coming out of my mouth and and I don't know I'm really lucky I feel like because the team I work on I work on this public policy team and I feel like that team is like a unicorn team I have been given so much grace so much space to just be myself, be angry, um, take take days off, like weeks off. I took a whole month off actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I've just, like 2020 for me started off shitty. My father was murdered at the top of 2020. And so it's always started off a bad year. And my team immediately jumped in and like was a big support and let me have all the time and grace I needed, sent me money without me having to ask to help support um, my travels that I would need to have happen during that time. So, and, and I also feel like I work on a team who understands like when people are going through traumas and hard times, it's not always like in them to know exactly what they need. And so there are days where I don't know what I need. I don't know what I want from, work that day I don't know if I don't want to work that day and so I also feel like they're really good at like picking up on like my social cues and um just knowing like even sometimes to t tell me when I need to take a break um and so yeah the only thing I know how to do is be direct and upfront and so that's what they get when when I'm not in a space to adhere to anything like that might be going on or that's like I feel is less important than what I'm going, what I have going on. So Elise, let me jump in. I want to say so sorry for your loss. My condolences. Um, similar situation. I lost my brother to COVID in middle of April, very close family. And so it's been extremely tough to deal with that and now come and deal with this violence that's been happening for years, but this, you know, quick succession, violent on camera. So I completely stand with you. I understand how you feel. And especially that part around, you don't know what you need. Like people kept asking me, what do you need? What do you want? I'm just like, I just want to go to bed. I want to go to sleep. I want to be by myself. You know, you don't know what you need. And so I know this call is supposed to be about the compounding effects of 
racism and COVID and whatever else is going on in our lives. Like mm -hmm. life doesn't stop. Life has not stopped because of COVID or racism. And so I really also wanna encourage everyone on this call to know who your team is, know who your tribe is. Um, for me, I have an amazing family. So, you know, this, we're talking about workplace conversations, but make sure that the people that you trust in your family, you're talking to them. You're being very honest with your family. Um, similar to Elise, I have a very strong team as well. And my manager has actually become someone that I speak to. I, 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 I speak to very candidly about everything that I'm going through, not just work. And she has been extremely supportive as well. Um, so having that tribe, having your friends that you know are there to support you, really lean on that, even in this time. And I want to also piggyback off what Andrea said about taking time away from social media. Um, if you need to take a break, take that time away, meditate, listen to the music that you love, play with the pet. Like, know all of the things that feed you and do those things very often because um, when it's time to return to work um especially for for me you know i feel like for us the erg the blk erg is the driving force around the change um at spotify in particular and so it is a lot of pressure and so we always have to take that time decompress and do everything that you have to do to really um, align with your self-love and self-care. Thank you. I, you know, I wanted to say to Sharice and Elise, you know, my extreme condolences. This is, you know, is such a tough, tough time for for you all to be going through this. And I think what Sharice, what you said of, you know, us as our BRGs. That's what we're there for, to be a support system for our, for our members. Sorry if y'all hear all that noise, it's firecrackers outside. <laughs> uh, so, but to be that, that support system for, for each other. And, you know, that's something that I rely on, you know, across the company of, you know, having, you know, my sis Ebony, when, when Takesha and Michelle were, you know, at Turner, like that, those were my... Those were my safe spaces where I could, you know, always go and be completely, you know, my 100% authentic self. And, you know, you're, when you're able to find those things and really utilize our BRGs for, for what they are, that's where you can get some of that, some of that support because we absolutely need it in this time as well as just trying to, you know, do some self care, but also just honor Let's, we have to honor this moment that we are in now to have these emotions and feel feel these feels because we are having such a watershed cathartic moment. And, you know, something that my dad said to me, you know, he's a, both of my parents are, you know, civil rights, Southern bred, you know, people. But, you know, my dad was like, he's like, I'm almost numb to it. But at the same time, our ancestors went through so much more and they persevered and they got through this. So that got into my mind of, we can do this. We are by nature survivors. That is who we are. And so we, let's just allow ourselves, excuse me, to cry. Let's be angry. Let's mourn. But then let's get up. We are, we are of resilient people. We, we are, you know, we are just descendants of some of the people, some of the strongest people on this planet. And so let's be in this moment, but then let's get up, let's mobilize, let's strategize because we dishonor them by giving up. Definitely. And I also just wanted to say, um, sorry for both of your losses, but uh, CC me on everything that everyone has said. Um, I think some of the things that I've learned is like going for walks have been really helpful for me. Um, you know, just clearing myself and my mental space and like really preserving time for me um, has really been helpful. Um, and also remember that, you know, you can be your authentic self. A lot of these companies didn't hire us to be a, a carbon copy of someone else. 
Um, meaning like if you're that diverse hire, like act like the diverse hire and, you know, be yourself and tell them what it is you're feeling, how you want to be treated. Um, even if you're not sure how you want to be treated, just opening your mouth and saying that is really powerful. Um, I was on a call earlier today and they just started doing small talk and someone asked me how I was feeling and I said, I don't want to talk right now. Um, and I was like, it's no offense to you or anyone else on this call, but this one I'd like to actually just listen to as opposed to being an active participant because I need to be here. Um, so just remember to really preserve your space and your peace like everyone else has said and find things that make you happy. We've been in the house now for three months, probably now going on three months, um, dealing specifically with COVID, um, which is already hard because we're not taking vacations. We're not really going outside. And when you do go outside, you have this face mask which is restricting your breathing um it's just not been a very comfortable year at all um so just recognize that and recognize that you're not doing things that make you happy and then find little spaces of happiness definitely agreed and yes my condolences to both Sharice and Elise um that is definitely very hard to deal with during this year so I do want to get into some of the people's questions in the chat um, I do want people to be able to also share their experiences afterwards and, you know, express how they're feeling in, their, in this time. So I'm going to start with some of the questions. So Jazz and Rodney asks, what about teams and workplaces in which no one is acknowledging anything? Any advice there? I think that's where you, again, start practicing that protecting your peace and understanding that you your person is not your job you are a whole person outside of your job and if that is the environment that you're in that they are not going to engage with you about that that's fine go to work do your job give them just as much energy as they're giving you stay gracious do your act be as excellent as you always are and then go home that's all you can do. That's all you cannot make them care. You cannot make somebody care about what's going on with you and what's going on with the world. And don't try. It's not, it's not worth your energy. Do your job and leave them alone. I also I want to encourage uh, people to feel free to leave that job also. Um, for me personally, I realized that I can't be in an environment for 40 hours of people ignoring my feelings, my thoughts, and how I operate. So um, I've been at a number of different places where I was like, well, they're not really respecting the things that I said I need. Um, and I will go. And I realize that that statement is a little bit more difficult since we are in the middle of a pandemic. Um, but also just be mindful that, you know, jobs are also supposed to be serving you as a two way street. People are constantly coming to our community for content, um, et cetera. And they're constantly take, take, taking. You need a job and a space and a place for you to feel safe and to be yourself. So don't feel like you need to stay there either. I'm a big, big fan of telling people to go find your happiness. And if that job is not your happiness, happiness, then you can find somewhere else that will make you happy because they're more than welcome to, to let you in. I have another perspective as well, too. Um, I, would, I agree with Takesha, but before you leave, I would actually stir the pot. I'm a big fan of stirring pots. Um, so sometimes it's a lot of discomfort in the leadership of these companies. And sometimes they just, they don't say anything because they really don't know how to address things and they don't know what to say which agreed is their responsibility to figure that out. But I am such a fan of stirring pots that I'm, I'll ask a question. I'll send an email to like the CEO. I will actually bring up the situation so that you ignoring me is the bigger statement than my question in the first place. So it really depends on who you are. It depends on what, you're, what you find important. Um, you know, for me, I'm really concerned about workplace energy, a, a healthy workplace, not just for me, but for all of my black colleagues. So I, I'm always stirring pots. And, but if you're not the stir the pot type, then don't stir the pot. Just go to work or you can leave. It really depends on who you are and what you decide to do. Yeah, I was gonna say that, that same thing, Sharice, because I feel like, yeah, while we don't owe it to them to kind of like hold them accountable for like caring or caring about, we owe it to ourselves to make sure they know that 
we see you and we see your silence and that it makes I, I'm not comfortable with it I don't like how you're treating me here um and yeah I think it's fair it's it's on us to our we owe ourselves to call out that bs um so I agree with you I would also I just want to add like I'm definitely a disruptor I feel that um and that there's a diversity of people and experiences and not everyone might feel like they have the privilege to be able to speak truth to power or to rabble rouse or to disrupt. Um, and I felt that way at my very first job. I started an agency. It was a hostile environment for me as both a woman and as a black woman. And I didn't feel like I had the power there. Um, but I did feel like I could create community. So I started with this other Caribbean guy who was a male, right? I started talking to people who I felt like I could be an ally and I sort of created my little community around me, which, which made it more bearable to be in that role before I could, before I was able to leave and eventually I ended up working with people. So I would just offer that as another alternative. Like if you, if you are not playing the role, if you're not able to, or if your personality is not attuned to disrupting, you can also work to create community and building coalitions is a really powerful way to speak truth to power. Because if there's one person raising their hand and saying this is bullshit, they'll just fire you. But if you have 10 people raising their hands, it's a different story. Um, and that's just another, another tool you can use as you try and navigate your way in the professional world. And let me just piggyback. Please don't get fired because of what I just said, everyone. Seriously. No. Um, <laughs> you kind of have to be very strategic about being the pot stirrer. And I'm not saying just randomly go to work and stir pots. You have to be strategic. You have to have actual plans behind your pot stern, like come with a deck, come with a plan, um, understand who your community is, make sure that you're not alone with those feelings. Um, everyone has a different role to play, like everyone is not in the same lane, but talking to the community at your workplace and understanding that, you know, number one, it's not just you who feels that way. Once a group of people feel a certain way, um, that means that it's worth bringing up and please come armed with information, metrics, and a plan. I do not just mean stirring the pot and getting fired, seriously. Yes, <laughs> and I think, that's so, I think that's so relevant of, you know, what you, what you put, put that footnote on, don't stir that pot without a strategy. Um, you know, it's so important in this moment right now, I think so many of us were trying to, trying to gauge what was gonna come out of our mouths the first time we spoke this week. And I think a lot of us were not, were not sure. And, you know, I know I went to my tribe and, you know, had to get talked down a ledge of, girl, you need a job, like stop. You know, and you have to be much more strategic and be smart about, you know, the role and even the role that I play as the leader of this BRG, you know, in my, the role that I play within my team of, we do have a, this is a unique moment right now. And I don't know how long it's gonna last, where we do have an opportunity to have these productive, honest, open conversations with people that might be able to make a difference, but striking that perfect balance of not doing the work for them, but serving it up in a perfect way so that actually something gets done this time. Mm -hmm. Lisa, I love that example. Um, and I think that's for the folks at different companies, that's something that we try to do strategically at the back black googler ne network like choose who are we going to have be the disruptor like is there an exec that we can go and pitch to who can send that email to rabble rouse to to like give some air cover to some folks in the organization so when we're thinking about like you know maybe your company's not sending a message like you know we drafted a template and i sent that to our white allies and i'm like hey guys wouldn't it be cool if you sent this email to sundar so we could get a moment of silence right so really being strategic not just like personally in your career, but at your company? Like who, who are the non-Black allies who may be in different positions of power who can help? And I also just want to drop in a book that I've just started. I, I don't have any like details from just the beginning, but it's called Emergent Strategy, Shaping Change, Changing Worlds. Um, and it's basically about how you can help um, build a new strategy together. Like how do you help do some of this work um, understanding that racism constantly will change shape and readapt as we try and look for solutions. 
Definitely. Thank you, Andrea, for that book. If you want to just drop it in the chat also, I'm sure a lot of people will be looking forward to it. So Barbie asks, how do you handle all white leadership and asking them how we're feeling, but we don't have trust in really speaking to them because in the past, our strong opinions have been met with restrictive policy changes or no follow-up and change. That was very <laughs> Read that question one more time. So she's asking, how do you deal with an all white leadership and them asking how you're feeling? But I guess maybe it's just not as genuine because in the past, when you spoke up and had your strong opinions, there's been no change or follow up, if that's how I'm reading it correctly. I would actually ask, you know, counter their question about how I'm feeling with, would you really like to know how I'm feeling or are you just asking that to be nice? Like I would actually go a little deeper and lean into their question because if you want the workplace answer, I'm cool. If you want the real answer, then I'll give it to you. So I would, I would do some digging in, into that question. Um, and then I would also tell that person, you know, decide how you feel that day. Like one thing that I, that I always feel is that you have to be authentic to yourself. If you really don't feel like answering that question because you've gotten it for 50, you know, 55 times that day already, then you could just say, I think someone else mentioned it. You know, I think it was Takesha who mentioned it. I'm really, I, I'm not really able to participate in this conversation. Like be honest with yourself be very authentic at all times, but lean into their question, like really call them on it and hold them accountable for asking you, do you really want to know how I'm feeling? Or are you just doing that because it's status quo? Are you just asking me because of status quo? If you are, I'll give you the status quo answer, which is I'm cool. I'm good doing my work. But if you really want to know, and I would hope you do want to know in this time, then I'll tell you how I'm doing, but it's all up to how you feel that day. And I think, you know, what Cherie said of, you know, judging the, judging the moment, judging how you feel in the moment and also, you know, understanding, ascertaining if they are, if they are in a position to actually do anything about what you're going to say, but, you know, most importantly, making sure that you are in a position that you want to expend that energy. I think, you know, I will speak for myself, you know, yesterday wasn't in the mood, just wasn't in the mood today. I had time and the conversations that I had, again, thinking with a strategic mind, you know, I was able to have them in an open, honest, transparent way in, in a way that there, there actually might be some productive change to come out of that. But it, when it was positioned to me, I also had to ascertain if this was about to be a safe place for me to even get in this dialogue, because that means I'm about to expend a lot of emotional energy and I'm not gonna be able to get that back. And I, and I, that's still a gamble no matter what. And so it's a lot of just gauging how safe this space is. Definitely, definitely agreed. Um, so the next question is how do we deal with racist <laughs> employees or ignorant employees who, you know, they may not even care to want to change and just kind of act how they like. You don't deal with them. If you know they don't want to change, if you know you're going to get nowhere with these those type of employees, please save your energy for something better. Like, do not engage with them. Um, leave that up to the, to the allies that maybe want to take them under their wing and you be support in that way to you. Well, they'll, well, they'll take on that that fight but you do not do not waste your energy with those type of people it's pointless that's a big thing of what you said elise of kind of activating your allies and that's something that i you know definitely do with some of the people uh that i work with of uh, you know a lot of times when they're like you know how can i help you can take that go deal with that thank you and you know make, make them do that work don't don't take that on yourself you can't I agree. I agree too that there are companies um, that have top-down leadership that make that just an unacceptable thing in general. Um, so just also making sure that you're aligning your companies with the different goals that you have in mind because I, I don't necessarily encounter that now um, at this current job. 
Um, and that's because top down, it's written everywhere and, and it's a core priority for people to be talking about DI. Um, so I don't experience that as much, but I also have a friend um, who reached out to me earlier today to talk about someone who was just not getting it. She was like, I'm white and I'm not racist. And she's trying to move her from not racist to anti-racist, right? Because one is more of an active statement as opposed to a passive statement. Um, and in her conversation with her, um, she just couldn't get it and she couldn't connect the dots. And I had to say to her at some point, how much energy do you really want to give this, right? You can provide her with all the educational tools in the world that you want, but if somebody wants to stay ignorant, they're going to stay ignorant. Um, and also remember within that is a level of privilege to stay ignorant, right? So like, they're also feeling like they don't have to do this type of work. And once you get to that type of person, I, I would say just fall back. It's not worth it. Um, you know, you can send them a little tool here and there, but really I love the idea of leaning on your allies to deal with that. Um, but I wouldn't even engage my energy in somebody who's not going to change. Definitely, for sure. And thank you guys all for your wonderful responses. I do want to open it up if anyone wants to speak, um, share how they're feeling or ask any questions live. Um, we can do so now. Hi, everyone. I guess I'll speak. Uh, my name is Tracy. Um, uh, I appreciate this forum right here because I really, really need it. Um, I actually do social media for an MBA team. And so I think Andrea was talking about staying off of social. So for me, that's really hard. Um, and we just furloughed about 40% of our staff last week. So I was one of the few Black voices before and now it's really low. Like I'm probably one of five or seven people there. And um, I founded our Black Affinity Group recently. And so people are looking for me for everything on this. Like we're, MBA is known for being pretty progressive, but our statement from our, uh, our commissioner, our statement from our president, we're doing a PSA and everyone's saying, what should we say? What should we say? What should we say? And this is all day long. Like I haven't even had a moment to like be like, I don't wanna talk about this, but I feel like it's almost my duty to talk about it. Not because I just founded and lead our Black Affinity Group, but because I'm one of the few voices left. I mean, I fell asleep at 10 o'clock last night and my boss texted me at 11.45 PM asking me an opinion on something. And then they posted it because I was sleeping. And then I woke up and said, ooh, maybe this isn't the best. And then we had to change it. So I feel like it's like I have to be on duty 24 hours a day to make sure they get it right and to also make sure you know we're saying everything correctly but also I don't have anyone to lean on like so what do you do to like ma actually make that time for yourself when you feel like you don't have anyone here to help you make that time like there's not my second in command for my black infinity group she got furloughed and she's not coming back so really it is just all on me and I just want to do everything right sorry for the long question <laughs> No. Um, I say there's a number of um, different ERG groups um, that we belong to for Blacks at Microsoft. Um, I'm happy to pass that list on to Michelle because it's really a long, robust list. Mm -hmm. um, but within some of those groups, um, we pose those different questions and we lean on each other for support um, as leads for these uh, different instances. But um, one thing I would directly say to you is set boundaries. Um, if there are certain times where you're sleeping, like, and the message is about to go out, like maybe just text them and say, hey, let's not do this tonight. Maybe we can do it tomorrow. Um, but you have to find a way to kind of set that limitation because you can't take it all on yourself. Um, and I told the story earlier, that's kind of where I started busting out in tears. Like I realized how frustrated I was from the constant text messages, the pings on teams, the emails that I was getting, it was nonstop. And mind you, we still have a full daytime job to do as well. Um, so just make sure that you're setting those boundaries and you're saying no when you cannot. Um, and make sure you try to take at least a mental health day. I tried it yesterday, it didn't go so well, um, but I do have plans to try again this week. So I'm gonna try again on Friday um, to really just get myself back in a mental space because um, the one thing I would like to also say is like, it's hard to lead if you yourself are not good. Um, so make sure that you take a step back and regroup yourself, set those boundaries, and then um, from there, try to work. 
um, and then join some of those different ERG groups so that the message is not all on you and you can find out what other companies Keisha, I think you you muted out for a few. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. I don't even know what part I said, but I'm going to send you everything. So you won't be all right, girl. <laughs> but can I just piggyback on that? Um, so I just, you know, that it sounds like there's a lot on your shoulders and you are the only one responsible for it because some people got furloughed and you're the one left. So what I would say to you is it really helps when you have like a committee that you work with to kind of share the load of work. I don't know if that's feasible, but um, you know, our ERG has a very strong committee so that it doesn't feel like all of the work is on one person. We as a group make the decisions, we understand what we have left, you know, what we have to do. Um, and when someone is really busy in their actual job, we understand that we're working together as a team. So if it's possible for you to kind of gather some other people and actually create that committee, um, you should do that. And definitely limit your time. It's not all on your shoulders and it should not be all on your shoulders. Thank you. I really appreciate those um, answers. And we only have one other ERG group and it's actually our women's group, which the leader is a white woman that wants nothing to do with a black group. Um, we kind of got into, yeah, we kind of got into it because I just mentioned how, you know, they don't have any programs for women of, I just even said women of color, not even black women. And she told me, this is not what the group is about. It's just a general group. We don't need that. And then she went to HR to complain about me and asked to have me fired for saying that. <laughs> and then I was told by HR that she was just having a bad day, give her the benefit of the doubt. But the way she was talking to me, I know I would never be allowed to talk to anyone that way in the workplace, but she is. So and I actually asked that in the chat, like if we should try to, should I unify? Because I am a black woman. Oh, but leave time, leave I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> deal with, I don't want anything to do with that. Like, I really don't. I mean, she even in the same conversation, she said, you should get it. Black and gay people are exactly the same. And, leave her be, you know. And, and, and she and, said this in the workplace. And I was just, no. obviously gay people have struggles too. I'm not discounting that in the least. But it's like she, this was at the Black History Month panel where this all happened, by the way. Yeah, we, we have to leave a be. You know, at Warner Media, we do, we do what we can at, at Black Professionals to find ways to align with all of our BRGs um, across the board. I just started a conversation with our LGBT group for, a, for an event that we'd like to do around Pride that's, you know, kind of centering our, our new HBO Max show legendary about ballroom culture like we we find those ways and we are finding ways to work with our turner women's groups but that's also because that is we're finding still um uh welcoming environments for us to do this sharing together but i mean like we're not here to beg anybody like that's we don't need to do that that's that's silly um so you just excuse me you just have to leave her be i would also say like I Find that that's an issue in a lot of women's group um, maybe not to that exact same extent because that is that's unacceptable right um, but I would say when I first started um, at Microsoft I had a similar issue where they kept on approaching uh, blacks at Microsoft to do events um, and I was just like some of these events are not for us these are white women events and these are talking about white women specific problems and they don't address the extra layer of my race um, and if you can't have that candid conversation with the women's group, then I say, um, screw them. I have stronger words, but I'll preserve that um, mm -hmm. because it's just not worth your time. And I would also say there are a lot of organizations outside of uh, maybe your immediate organization. Um, I met one of, uh, I feel like your other co-lead um, at the, when we went to the Warner Media Group for EJI. Um, and one of the groups I talked to her about was uh, minorities in sports. Um, so if you can't find that synergy within your company, just know that there are other minority groups that have already formed um, that can kind of help you. And maybe you can find synergies there because those groups also have women who uh, feel marginalized within the sports industry. And from there, you can kind of build and partner um, and find things that make a little bit more sense than a woman's group who doesn't want you. And in addition, the NBA is a, in New York, is a member of the 
the Black ERG Collective. That's with a whole bunch of uh, a bunch of our uh, partner companies as well. So that is a another opportunity to have kind of an even bigger uh, support system um, as representatives of all of our respective BRGs. Definitely, Tracy. I just want to say, like, it sounds like you're dealing with a lot. The, the issue with the women's group is a tale as old as time. If you look back in history, this is exactly what happens with the, with the women's movement. But I want to give you permission, like, not to fix everything. I know it's hard because I'm sure you're like on top of everything. You want everything to be perfect. You want to, you know, help unify your company. But if you like are already feeling overwhelmed, like. I want to give you permission, like, let it be. Like, there's there's a lot you could do. You could educate her. You could answer back. But like, you better really take care of yourself right now. Um, and, like, send them some resources. Have her read White Fragility. You know what I mean? Just, like, drop some reading lists in her email or in HR's email and see what they say. Thank you. I've been trying, to, and I promise I won't say anything else so that everyone else can talk. Um, I've been... Try, it's been hard like there's times where I randomly just cry and then I stop and then I cry and then it's like I can't cry so it so honestly I randomly found this on LinkedIn today so I'm really thankful to be able to see all of this group here today and be able to talk to you because I feel like my mental health is hanging on by like a thread like it's and I felt like I had no outlet to go to so I really do appreciate it thank you all you, if you did, if you want to make a difference, you really did make a difference with me today. Feel free to reach out also directly. Um, don't feel like this has to be the end of the conversation. Like I said, we're a group of women, most of us who are speaking, actually all of us. Um, and I'm sure, even though I'm speaking for everyone, that we would not mind extending ourselves um, to help you. You don't need to feel alone in this at all. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I believe we have time for one or two more questions if someone else would like to speak. I don't have a question, just a comment. I just, first of all, I wanna start by saying thank you so much to all you incredible African-American beautiful women for um, presenting this platform and letting the world know that there is a place to go and talk, um, just expressing, um, everything that you guys have from self-advocacy to mental health and taking breaks is extremely important. Um, I work in the mental health field and I will tell you, I wish um, years ago, because I'm much older than everybody here, there was a platform like this where we could come together and say, hey, I need this support. Because I can tell you that um, as the young lady was talking before, as a woman of color, a lot of times, we are, you know, isolated in the workplace and we do not have um, the platform to express ourselves because there's fear of termination. I'm not experiencing that now. Years ago, um, that was um, something that I went through. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was um, as a mother of three African-American men, this um, incident was very um, heartbreaking to me. And being able to process this whole thing and knowing that um, I have to um, protect my boys is very important, whether that boys or young men. Um, it's frightening because um, George Floyd could be anybody's child. And what I know is that when police pull over um, these young men, nobody um, takes the time to know anything about them you know, they see our children as threats. You know, I have a six, one child is six, three, one's a six foot and the other one is five, five. And they're all educated, hardworking African-American men, but they look the same when they walk out the door. I have one of my, my middle, my older son experienced a really big incident with racial profiling at a charter school that he works with a few months ago in Brooklyn, where he was cornered off. It's a very long story, um, but he was cornered off, called a clown. Um, in front of his principal, uh, went to the precinct, um, was told that this is not Black Lives Matter. It was a whole big deal. But because um, as a mom, I had to, what you would call train my children on how to respond to police um, because I want them to come home. Um, it's unfortunate because 
white people do not have to do that. But being able to say yes sir, no sir, even when they are calling you the most horrific things. It's very difficult because as a human being or any man, you don't want to have to do that. But at the end of the day, I need them to come home. Um, and they've all experienced some sort of racism. You know, we grew, they grew up in a community that was predominantly white. I'm from the inner cities of New York, but you know, good and, good and bad pro, you know, um, with that decision. They came out really well, but they were this big in a pond this much in a community that was, you know, predominantly white. So of course they have experienced things. They're both, they're all, all of my children. I have two daughters and three sons are very um, verbal. They're very vocal. You're, one of them is actually sitting on the panel. I didn't want to say, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> My children are all very verbal. They've all, they all walked this past week for three days straight. Of course, my heart was beating. I'm looking at them on Instagram and they're shouting and everything that I, I empowered them with, I was super proud. I was on the front lines on Sunday um, and you know, just watching them and I'm still, I was still in fear because as I said, um, my, my oldest is 6'3". He's um, is the sweetest person as ever. He's an assistant principal, but nobody sees that when they see our children. So I don't have a question. I just wanted to thank you women. I am super proud of you all. I am, it, this is completely dope if I can say that. Um, just seeing you ladies in your positions, um, speaking and just giving your knowledge. I thank you. Um, you are a blessing and our children um, need to see this. Um, I'm always, I so when I say our children, I work in a human service field. I work in uh, Newburgh, New York. It's uh, inner city. We have the worst, we have a very high murder rate, gang rates. Uh, and I, and I'm a case manager and I'm constantly looking for people that look like you because they don't see it. You know, I, I believe that in order to achieve, you've got to be able to see, seeing it on TV is one thing, but hearing you women and being able to say, Oh my God, this woman is, she works at Google, you work at Microsoft, you have no idea. Um, just on the couple of trips I, um, I was able to take them with at Microsoft, I've gotten about 10 kids interested in the STEM field. So, I, so thank you. And I, I pray for you guys to your safety. And um, I appreciate everything that you do. And just thank you, thank you for all that you do. That's all I have to say. Talked a lot, but thank you. Oh, thank you so much to Keisha's mom. <laughs> to Keisha's mom. <laughs> and you're not allowed to say dope. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just wanted to yeah. circle back to that. <laughs> yeah. well, I, have to, I have to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're running a little long. I don't want to keep, you know, everyone over time. But, you know, if one last person has anything to say, um, like we all said, everyone is open to reaching out after. Let's not stop this con like conversation, but if one last person wants to share any last thoughts or feelings or questions for our panelists before we go. Yeah, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll go uh, really quick. Um, hi everyone, my name is Jesslyn Charles. Um, Want to thank everyone for listening to me. representing us. I just wanted to say that really quick. Um, for a black man in America, this uh, past week has been really tough for me. Uh, getting up on Monday, you know, I didn't, I didn't really, I really want to work. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't want to work. Um, and I just started a new job. Like, I just started a new job. And I'm thinking, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do this this week. Like it's, I'm just so bothered. I'm so frustrated. And that could have been me. That could have been me with the cop's knee in my neck. It could have been me. It could have been any black man in America. And that, it just doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't, it doesn't, it like, it bothers me. It bothers me deep down. And, um, I've seen this so many times before, but it's like this particular situation, it just hit different. I don't know why, I don't know how, but it just hit different. Like it just, it, it really bothers me. Even sitting here, like talking about it, it's not, it's not easy for me. Um, so I just wanted to encourage 
every black man that's on this call today, like we we don't get the support we need. We don't get the support we need. And um, even me starting a new job, um, I recently I recently started at Amazon. So me trying to go through, you know, who who my allies are and who to watch out for. It's been a tough couple of weeks, you know, trying to navigate that path. And um, for me, even before this whole pandemic, just leaving my house, it was always a concern of mine that I, I wouldn't come back home. The minute I leave, walk into my car and somebody crosses the street because they see me approaching. And I'll, I've always been a person who is, um, you know, likes to turn the other cheek and look at things from a different perspective. I've always seen it as this person is ignorant or they're misinformed. And um, I'll just leave you guys with this. I was speaking with a colleague yesterday and um, this is all part of my training, my training, uh, my, my two month training. And we had a set, you know, agenda, certain things we wanted to talk about. And this is a white, this is a white man. And for 45 minutes, this was a 30 minute meeting for 45 minutes, we spoke about last week's events. And I know a lot of people here said, you know, we're not really ready to talk about it. But for me, he had no idea how much that meant to me because frankly, at work, I don't get, as a black man, I don't get the chance to say how I feel. I've, I've never had that platform. So for this white man to scratch, scratch this agenda, this professional agenda of you training me or teaching me about the platform and to give me an opportunity to just say how I feel, that meant, that meant the world to me. Like that made my day right there. So if anything, I just want to leave you guys with this. Not everyone is, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is forgive those who don't know and um, accept those who are trying to learn, if that makes sense. There are certain individuals out there who they don't, they don't know what it means to be black because they're not, they weren't raised that way. They weren't accustomed to that. So I, I feel like it's our duty, it's our job, yes, to, for them to learn on their own, but at the same time for us to educate them and give them the information to tell people who look like them, like, hey, these are not bad people. Like, these are, these are good people. These are hardworking people. These are loving people. Like, these are people that we can be friends with. Just because we look different, you don't know what we have, what we might, might have in common because you haven't given us the opportunity to do that to work together, to be friends, to go out, go out to eat, to go out to, you know, to do things of that nature. So I just wanted to leave everyone with that. I know we're a little bit over time, but um, I couldn't let this call end without getting that off my chest. So again, thank you guys um, for this. It just made my week. Like I, I, I feel like a weight has been lifted. So thank you guys uh, for, for this, uh, for this call. I just, I know we are over time. So feel free who get, ever got to go can go but um i just wanted to say one last thing of course um i just want to remind everyone to stay encouraged and always remember how powerful we are as black people especially right now you see how the world has literally stopped and gone into this uproar and has paid attention to finally paid attention to what's going on to our lives like we have i i, I mentioned this earlier and i feel like I'm, I hope I'm not a rare case, but I do understand how privileged I am to work at a company where I have witnessed the power of our Black people at that company. Um, I've seen what our ERG, and shout out to the ERG founding members of Lifts Up, Lift Forward, they came in and immediately like demanded change and demanded to see the change that they wanted to see. So when I see these memes going around about how companies um, are posting on social, but like your executive board doesn't look like what you're say, saying. I, I'm so lucky that I can say that that is not the case at Lyft. Like I see myself in so many leaders and executive leaders at that company, and it's all because of what Black people at that company have showed up and spoke out for. So remember how powerful you are. This, this country has proven that nothing moves if Black people don't say it moves. Um, and uh, just stay encouraged despite all of what's going on. And like everyone has said earlier, like find allies, find coalitions to help amplify what messages you're trying to bring. Cause we literally 
have this power and we have it right now in this moment while everyone is finally paying attention. And to quote the great, great prophet Charlemagne the God, nothing good will come to America and I'm inserting nothing good will come to these our companies until they do right by black people. So use this time to demand and get what you want out of your companies if you're not getting it right now. That's it. Thank you. That was literally the best note to end on. <laughs> Well, thank you guys. If any of our panels have any other last words that they want to say, since you know we are over time, want to leave with some words of advice, wisdom, um, just to you know continue this conversation moving forward. I don't want to just end it, and you know we, the the mission keeps going, so we have to keep going from here. I guess my my last words. I think someone mentioned it before, but um, our ancestors never gave up. We they never ever gave up, and I think that. Right now, we're living in a different time. We, we have different problems. We have different forms of racism that has mutated over the years. But even though we're telling you now, have your self-care opportunities. Make sure you t you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're getting that rest, that meditation. But for me personally, I'm never going to say, okay, I'm done advocating. I'm done fighting for this. Um, because we are resilient people. And we have it in us to, someone else just said it, we are so powerful. One voice, even though you're scared, even though you might be anxious, if you come with a plan, one voice can make a very huge difference. So I just wanna encourage all of you as well to not forget about the power that you have and to not forget where you came from. I agree so much with that. And I think one of the, what Michelle asked us to, when we were you know, agreeing to be on this was to, identify a quote that resonated with us about this. And the one that I chose was from Harriet Tubman that said, if you hear the dogs, keep going. If you see the torches in the woods, keep going. If they're shouting after you, keep going. Do not ever stop, keep going. If you want a taste of freedom, keep going. She is telling us, the ancestors are telling us, keep going. We cannot stop. We might not, and we might not be the ones that get there, but just like the ones before us, we have to keep going. We can do this. We can take it, let's be you know, mindful of the moment, but let's get up tomorrow and make this happen. Let's use this moment and it is not over. Um, I don't have anything super powerful like everybody else just said, but I just wanna remind everyone to kind of preserve their peace. Um, and be very aware of your mental health during this time. Um, a lot of us are going through emotions on a daily basis, whether they are up, down, to the side, left or right. Um, just acknowledge your feelings and make sure that you take the space that you need. Um, and then once you do do that, I'm with everybody else. We got to keep on going. There's a movement happening, um, whether we are on the bridge of like another civil rights movement, whatever it is, um, we need to make sure that we're banding together in order to make sure that we're creating lasting change. Um, and again, we're here for you. Um, if you need to talk to us, I personally say reach out to me um, and I can try to help you in whatever way that I can, but also realize that, um, you know, there's a lot of different resources that are available for us and that we need to be taking our time and really getting through this. Definitely. Yeah. And I'll just close it up by saying thank you. Mm -hmm. Like, thank you all for coming together, for sharing, for being vulnerable. I saw the chat. Y'all were really active and engaged. I love that. Um, this is how we support each other, by coming together, by listening. We have the answers inside of ourselves. We have to step into our power, build the community together, take care of ourselves, fill up our own cups, and let it overflow. So thank you all. Definitely. Well, thank you guys, everyone for coming. I really appreciate it. I really think that this was very beneficial and very effective. And like we all said, the fight is not over. We need to keep supporting each other. We need to keep unifying. We need to just keep lifting each other as, you know, black, as the black community. So let's continue to connect. Um, I'm gonna leave the chat open for a few since I know a bunch of links were dropped. If anyone wants to, you know, keep scrolling through. Um, and like, like everyone said, feel free to reach out for any resources. You can personally reach out to me. Um, and I'm probably going to be doing another series of different chats. So if you want to stay um, connected, follow me on LinkedIn um, or follow It's Epic Group on Instagram. 
So thank you guys so much. This was so great and so very much needed. Um, I appreciate everyone. Thank you to the panelists for you know agreeing so last minute um, with this time sensitive subject, but I just really knew that we had to kick off the week by getting everyone's head straight. And thank you everyone for giving me time on the Blackout Tuesday. I know everyone has been staying off the internet and staying off socials for a lot, but I really do appreciate everyone coming out tonight. So thank you. <laughs>